Hello and welcome to ILTV's Evening Update. I'm Aaron Porras here with the latest news from Israel. Two border police officers and two Palestinians were wounded yesterday when a motorcycle carrying the Palestinians hit the officers north of the West Bank city of Jenin. According to a police report, four motorcycles approached a checkpoint manned by the border police. When the police signaled the vehicles to stop, three motorcycles allegedly broke through and one of the motorcycles carrying two passengers hit two border police officers. The two injured Palestinians were detained and police are investigating the incident. The other individuals involved were not caught. The two injured officers, a man and a woman both around 20 years old, were lightly to moderately wounded in the incident. A large number of security forces arrived at the scene with officials trying to determine whether the episode was an accident or an attack. Israeli President Reuven Rivlin dismissed the upcoming Paris Peace Conference, telling the President of the French Senate Gerard Larcher that there are no shortcuts in the Middle East. Instead, Rivlin said Israel and the Palestinian leadership should take a different approach. The solution to the conflict requires two things, Rivlin said, to build trust between the two sides and direct negotiations between the two sides. Without trust, he maintained, no solution will work, and without negotiations, no solution can be reached. Rivlin also told Larchel that the recent UN Security Council Resolution 2334 condemning Jewish communities in post-67 territories, which includes the Western Wall, was not helpful in building trust. Instead, Rivlin said, that vote had pushed the two sides further away from peace. Larcher is a member of an opposition party and does not belong to the French government. It seems that United Nations Security Council Resolution 2334 isn't the only way that the UN has been recently subverting the image of Israel. An ongoing Israeli investigation into United Nations-run schools in the West Bank has revealed that the materials used to teach Palestinian students continues to consistently delegitimize and demonize the Jewish state. The textbooks are written by the Palestinian Ministry of Education and are used by UN Relief and Works Agency schools in all the Palestinian territories of the West Bank and Gaza. They systematically distort the history of the Middle East and remove all mention of Jewish religious and historical ties to the Holy Land. Palestine is superimposed over the entirety of Israel on all maps. Names of cities like Tel Aviv and other entirely Israeli cities are renamed, and historical events or photos are manipulated and or photoshopped to overwrite Israel's existence or make Jews out to be the aggressors. The most disturbing discovery with respect to the future of peace in the region, however, is how the UN-sanctioned schools do not teach Palestinian students to recognize Israel as a country, regardless of her borders, 1948 or otherwise. Israel has continuously fought against the use of UN-owned establishments like schools and hospitals from being used as weapons storehouses, launch points, incitement centers, and worse. Former Defense Minister Moshe Ya'alon says that the IDF victory in 2014's Israeli-Gaza war brought about complete quiet to the Palestinian enclave. Speaking at the IDC-ICT Herzliya conference on Monday night, Ya'alon said that not only Hamas but even Islamic Jihad has been discouraged from initiating a war with Israel and that the small groups of Salafists and ISIS sympathizers who occasionally fire rockets into open fields are just showing their frustration with Hamas. The former defense minister was also optimistic when looking at Israel's other borders, saying that the Lebanese, Syrian, and Jordanian borders are all relatively quiet, and that even threats from jihadists in the Sinai are not as seriously threatening levels. Yaelon then expressed hope that President-elect Donald Trump would take a stronger position than the outgoing Obama administration did at pushing Iran to reduce its sponsorship of terror all over the world. The end of the year report card is just in on the performance of Israeli high-tech companies and the scores are outstanding. There was a 12% increase in business over 2015 with Israeli firms racking up a total of $10 billion. The high-tech sector closed 104 exit deals, including M&As, meaning mergers and acquisitions, investor buyouts, or initial public offerings. The largest acquisition of 2016 was the phenomenal $4.4 billion purchase of an Israeli online gaming company called Playtika to Giant Chinese Interactive Group. Meanwhile, startups in the Jewish state succeeded in attracting an unprecedented $700 million in investments, and the numbers show that cybersecurity is still one of the country's strongest tech clusters. Even though all this data is impressive, it's a little misleading, because figures have been even higher in previous years. It's also important to remember that there was an all-time record in Israeli M&A expenditures, adding up to nearly $3.3 billion spending spree. 
Industry experts are optimistic that the cumulative dynamics of Israel ingenuity and innovation forecast an even better turnout next year. That's all for now. Tune in to ILTV for our main daily broadcast playing after this. I'm Aaron Porras, and see you tomorrow with our morning briefing from Israel at 8 a.m. Eastern Time.